That was Takeover Bars. Yeah. Now this is the Takeover Files. What's going on? It's your boy Lito Takeover. This is the Takeover sure, Files, sure, man. Sure, man. Hey, God. What's up, man? Why you just do that on the files? Why you just do that? I'm 20 years late, bro. Bro, I feel like I lost my voice. I'm 20 years <laughs> late, bro. bro you, and you, you keep saying for for we go we gonna get to this 20 years late, dog. Cause it sounds like you're right on time. Yeah, I'm on time. We create as you know, does what we do on purpose. No, that's a big fact, man. Gotti, where you from, brother? 20 from York, YSB. Dang, so so for those who don't know, where exactly is 20 from York? 20 from York is the heart of the city, man. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, in us we trust. So listen, man, you gotta let I don't wanna I don't wanna just you say the heart of the city, feel me? North Philly, 20 from York. You already know <laughs> where I'm big from. F, right? Stop playing. The big, I had listen, Stop dog. playing. Listen, I, York listen. Street, Cumberland Street, Susquehanna, what's up, man? Stand up. Dolphin uh, Street, Susquehanna. All that man, North Philly, Diamond Street, North Street. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, Bird that's, Street. That's what the fuck I wanted to hear. You know I mean, you feel me? I feel North of the city. That's where I'm from. All right, my dog, man. Hey, bro. First of all, I want to say I appreciate you for rocking with us, bro. Times, appreciate man, you times, coming through. Just burning down, take over bars. I'm still sweating. It's hot as for shit. Sure, for sure. I'm saying, I'm sorry. But, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Don't ever apologize, because <laughs> that was for them. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Yeah, don't fuck that. So, man, to, growing up in North Philly, you feel me? I, I just want to get into a little bit of your story, you know what I'm saying? Um, what was it like, you feel me, during your time? I heard you say in one of your bars you've been spending since 9-6, you feel me? So I want to know, before 9-6, you feel me, just you coming up, uh, uh, what was it like, bro, just from your, your scopes? Um, shit was hard. Basically just running around trapping. I mean, mom was fucked up. I used to play basketball. I used to go to mansion. It was nice. Yeah, it was nice. I played with. You used to. You don't, you don't hoop no more. I still play with my sons and all that, but I'm still nice with it. I, I guess you half court with ease. You know enough. And I played with Maurice Rice. I played with Omar Thomas. I played with Fatty. You know, I, 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 I've been around. I've been all right, around. listen, we gonna have to take over tournament, nigga. That's coming soon. Yeah, I've been you feel me? I don't want to stop playing ball and picked up grams hey, when I was a young boy. I feel that. I ain't lying. Everybody know it. So, so, so what, what went into that? Was that more so of a um that decision? You know what I'm saying was it more of a uh, had to? No, I had to. Uh-huh. I had to. Mom was fucked up. Dad was around, but mom was you know doing what she was doing. I mean, it's like we come from we come from people know the story, people understand our environment and what, what was going on at that particular time in those years. Um, I grew up in the speakeasy. My grandmama had the John L. Mm-hmm. Fourth and Federal. You know what I mean? Just doing what we was doing, man. Just trying to survive and just make it happen, man. He's moving on Woodstock like and Susquehanna. You know what I mean? And that's why I saw it. I was like, hold the fuck up. It was at the top of the block. What's was going on down there. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? And I walked to the deli and I just saw, what the fuck? Oh, all right, this was going on. So grandma said, I'm going around there. And I came back in the crib and she was like, yeah, so I don't want you outside. You got to stay in here. And then speedball on it. Life watching my uncles dealing with women and shit was crazy, and I was just a kid back then. You know what I mean, just watching how people struggled and trying to figure out a way. And mom doing the best she could, you know, doing my dad was giving her. I mean, it was hard for me. And then we moved on 19th Street, and then my life just changed. It just changed the area. Just changed my life. I'm gonna keep it all the way hundred. Just changed my life from seeing what I saw. I was like. I don't want to live like that. I can live like this. Mm. I can help mom out. I'm just a product of my environment. I just adapt to this shit. Adapt. I totally adapt to it, bro. I'm just like, I got walk to the block. Talk a little louder for me, bro. I got, um, I walked to the block and um, my man was like, you need some bread. I was like, yeah, I'm fucked up. He was like, I see you all the time. I mean, what the fuck you be doing? I'm like, man, I be saving this money helping my mom. He was like, well, I see you're not like the rest of the little young boys that's out here, so I'm, I'm going to help you out. I mean, he introduced me to a nigga named Corey. Rest in peace. I mean, um, and from there on, I was bagging that shit up mm. until I was like 10. And I started hand in hand in that. Damn, so all this was under 10. Yeah, I started hand. I started bagging. I was bagging it up at like 10. I started hand in hand. I was 11. And got the shift from 4 to 12. Went to school. Came home. 3 o'clock. And went to the strap. Mm. 4 to 12 every day. My fucking life, while I was in the crack house, and, and it was normal. It was normal, yeah. It was, it was normal. normal. It was normal for me. Did 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 ever become a time where you was like, yo, that's not normal? No, because all I all I knew, mm. I, didn't, I had no guidance. 
and me. And I found him. I had no guidance, but I was fucking nine, ten years old. I had no guidance. I knew. My mom was ripping rims, alcoholics. I had no guidance, but my environment was my guidance. I went. I, my school was school, but Cumberland Street was my college and my guidance. Mm. Old heads fucking up. They failures was my knowledge. Me watching my environment was going on and seeing what was right and wrong, and you got to pick what's what. Right. Shout out to my old head shiz. You know what I mean, Muslim brother, he took me under the wing, showed me some things, told me some things, took a couple guys. I mean, um, Opal and Cumberland. Yeah, I just watch, sit and watch. Boy, Mark, uh, just, just, just watch a lot of people out there. Just watch people and just do certain things. Just like, damn, it's, it's the way to go. It's not the way to go. See, so they, they was working guys, working in the water department, electric company, shit like that. It was like, all right, they working, but are they still fucked up too? Yeah. Because they working, I'm watching. It's like no incentive to the world. It's like no example of somebody that's working that's comfortable. Yeah, but they still fucked up. I'm seeing yeah. how they living. It's like, all right, they live how my folks live. I'm seeing how they living. They struggling, they arguing with the women. It's like, all right, but damn, what, what's, how you get out of this shit? Yeah. And I'm seeing these cars ride by. I'm seeing these guys with the chains on. It's like, oh, shit. Like, I want man. that. Yeah, I want that shit. Not fast. I want that. You know what I'm saying? So, from all the rail, you know what I mean? And rail walk me to the block. They introduced me to Corey. He was like, man, this is my young boy. Just look out for him. Mm. I mean, it changed my life, per se. I mean, I some people that. look at it as a, as a bad thing, like he walked me to something bad. But for my situation and what it was for me, that shit changed my life. He I knew what that. was going on. He and him, me and him still, I mean, to this day, mm. he knew what it was. It was like, young boy needed a way to fuck out. He's different from everybody else. People was doing robberies and shit back then. That wasn't my twist. I ain't taking nothing from nobody. I did a couple robberies, but that wasn't it for me. No, I fact. I mean, running down on a motherfucker. I did a couple robberies, and the last one that, that hit me was, was like on Mother's Day. And it was, I mean, he was on a train. And coincidentally, he stopped at the North Philly station at Brown Lehigh. And the nigga had a bag full of Mother's Day gift shit. I <laughs> mean, and I put the burner to him. He had some sneaks in the bag. And my man wore a size, and I think, like seven or eight. And it was like, damn, there you go your sneaks, bro. Take the sneaks. I gave him the sneaks. And the rest of the Mother's Day shit was for my mom. Mm. And as I had this shit in my hand, I'm walking with it. Like, I'm looking at him cry. You know what I mean? Like, this nigga just took my mom's shit from me. You know what I mean? I was like, no, nah, this ain't it, yo. Oh, I'm, I, dare I go in the crib, you know, with your shit that you, whatever you did, I don't know what you did, but taking it to your mom, you know what I mean? And I just robbed you for your shit. To give it mm. to my mom, like, it's honorable. Like, I I, I, I did something, mom. I'm like, no, nah, that ain't. That ain't that. That, that let me know, like, no, nah, this this is, like, beyond wrong. I gave main man all his shit back. He was like, you can get boys? He's like, yeah, I'm giving his shit back, bro. Keep them sneaks, but you take all your mom shit to your mom, bro. Oh, word. And I went in the crib and was like, mom, I ain't got nothing. When I went in the crib that particular day, she had a head at the table, like, Looking at the bills, I was like, damn, his mother's day mom damn fucked up. What I'ma do? I went around the corner and I was playing basketball. I had like ten dollars in my hand and they was shooting dice. So it was like, man, I bet you can't make it. I was like, all right, I'll give you ten dollars, I'll make the shot. And I made it. They gave me, they gave me twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. I took that twenty dollars. I did that shit four or five times. And I, I I saved that money and I kept saving it every week. Come on, Old Powell and Cumberland. They would shoot basketball and right there, 19 from Cumberland, they'd pull right there, the basketball court right there. I would shoot right there and stack money and do anything I could possibly do to save money. You know? mm. And that's what I was doing. And then, like I said, when they walked me to the block, <laughs> that oh, was man. it for me. That was it. Was like you can't be out here like because you're a kid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know what I mean this. Rel said you cool. You, I see how you operate. You know what I mean? So I'm going to look after you for a little minute. Man. That's what he did for me. He looked so, after me. So so at what part? Because I heard a little earlier you said, I believe you said your grandma had to speak easy. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. So would you say you're in love with music? Yeah. I heard the music in the end, uh, playing all fucking day, Marvin Gaye and all that shit. Like. So do you remember like that moment that you fell in love with music? Like when you was just like, and not even necessarily um, being an artist, being a rapper. Just. I always loved music, but the moment that music was for me, mm. I was um at this particular time I was going to school out West Philly. It was like a like a bad school we was going to. And um we went to this little like on C Line Avenue these back then it was like tapes and shit. Mm. 
I stole a fucking uh, exhibit album, and uh, it was a tape though. That and uh, a Tupac was on mm. Tupacalypse. I took that shit. And I was listening to that, <laughs> and that's did it. <laughs> I feel that. Though. I was listening to Tupacalypse, and I was like, "Yo, he talking some crazy shit." And, uh, and that shit was it for you. Everything he was saying was like, "Yo, this is crazy." Like, mm. Damn, like, I feel him. Like, all right. I'm listening to it, and then yeah, it was like, oh, all right, I like this shit. I like what he's saying. I like what he's saying because I'm listening to it and I'm seeing it. Yeah, right. It's like, damn, it's just stuck. It's me. relatable. It's relatable. You connected stuck. to it. That shit just stuck with me, man. I feel that. I was always walking around just saying little shit though, but I always had a little fly, a little mouth in my environment. Right, <laughs> right. No, I feel but that. The music shit though, I'm gonna say pop really like had me like. He inspired that for a yeah. Friend. That's a, that's a young adolescent. Right. And when I really like took it serious, serious, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real serious, Beanie Siegel. Mm. Bean, like, when Beanie said he hit. And I heard Beanie Siegel, dog, like, I don't know. Mm. I'm going to give it a buck with you. Beanie was like, I don't know. Beanie Siegel, I grew up on major figures in Beanie Siegel and Tupac. Mm. That's a hell of a comment. That's what that that explains <laughs> why he talked the way he talked on that fucking takeover boss. Because beans, you feel me? Said beans, major figures, and pop. That's that's Ram Squad was it was cool. Like, Ram Squad, and I, and I don't know too much about Ram Squad. You feel me? Because I'm, I'm a little young. You know what I'm saying I heard a little st- they was doing like, like, so a couple of songs they did, but major figures was it for me. Yeah, like cause I was listening. It was like them niggas was talking fucking goofy. <laughs> no, they fact. was talking goofy. No, that's a fact. Like goofy shit. And it was like, yo, and I was watching the shit they was doing at the time frame as mm. a kid growing up. You know what I'm saying? And I was watching the area. I'm, I'm from North Philly, and people know what I'm talking about. Mm. So I was running around. Yeah. No, and it's dope that you know that that those um those they not even art. They they were all different. Tupac is a movement. Tupac is bigger than the artist. Beans is a movement. He's bigger than the artist. Mega right, Fit right, was a movement. Right, right. But the impact that they all, they had on their generation, their culture, right, you right. feel me? It's like, it's inevitable, bro. It's inevitable. If you, you know? if you listen, I'm telling you now, you rapping, you going to say that major figures didn't have an impact on your life. You are a liar. If you saying Beanie Siegel didn't have an impact on your life, you are a liar. If you're from the city, you're lying. No, that's a lying. fact. <laughs> that's a fact. You're lying, bro. Major figures, Beanie Siegel, Ice City, all that type shit back in the day, all that. That was it. That was like, you're lying if you ain't say you ain't come off that shit. And, and for me, right? But with major figures, for me, I didn't realize the um the impact for major figures until later on. You right. feel me? So it was like once I heard, like even if you hear a yeah, that's us. You feel me? Which is they probably most commercial joint. You feel me? But how Gil come on talking, look at us, look at y'all. It's like he was talking different than the other rappers was talking, you feel me? Right, right. So it was just like, I don't know, I feel like with his major figures aspect, they gave like a a slickness to that shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, but, but related to the trenches, they was talking to, yeah, to the hood, Spade, you feel me? Spade was oh, like. Spade was fucking. Psh, yeah. yeah. Shout out Spade, he just came and blessed the Rocky, bars, you know, you know the rest of, that was like. Hearing that shit was like, yo, uh, them little motherfuckers was animals. Mm-hmm. You hearing that shit was like, damn, they kids talking like that. So no, f- fuck? <laughs> <Facts>. <laughs> I'm a kid too. <laughs> and they talking like that, so I know they around it because they exposed to mm-hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? There's I certain just, shit you could say that, yeah. that niggas know, like, oh, he really knows something. Right. <laughs> you feel right. I me? Mean? Right. There's certain little right. shit you could say. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hey, bro, so, so speaking of you, what was the first time you jumped in the booth? The first time I jumped in the booth? Um, I don't, I don't remember the year and none of that shit. But it was the first time I went to the studio. It was a guy named Reese. He joined us in his basement. I was in there and um, gripped up entertainment. We did some shit with B Street Records on Fulton Street in mm-hmm. Brooklyn. And um, they white labeled the little album. Me, Major League, Nikki Banks had an album white label. Shopped around the Violators, uh, Diplomats, uh, a couple people. DJ Goldfingers met Clark Kent. Um, was in that in that store on Brooklyn. This is all facts. He was in that store rapping, and he picked us. It was me, Major Lee, Nikki Banks, and there was a couple other people, but he picked us three. Yeah, like they are it, like they it. And we did a whole little album. 
and gave that shit right back to him. And next thing you know, you heard, okay, okay, hey, okay, hey, hey. We, we did that shit first. Mm. Let's keep it in a bean. I don't know about, you know, I ain't reaching. I ain't trying to clout chase none of that bullshit, but it's all facts. I'm not lying. It's all facts. And um, that extended off to when DMX had his on label bloodline and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, it was back in that time. Okay. Um, I was linking with people in that time. Running around with that. I was signing Teflon Entertainment. Um, Slick, Hunted and Park, Wall Street, what's up? Lady to death, baby. Um, it was in there. Lee was battling with somebody, and I was supposed to battle somebody, and I rapped, and the crowd went crazy, and shit just went left. And that was a movie within itself. And the time frame was like it was like a lot of shit going. On. I got a whole lot of shit going on with me, mm. and um, a lot of shit that mm. transpired back then. So, so what happened? Like, what what caused? Like, even what you're saying, twenty years late. You feel me? Like, what life, caused the stop? Man, life, man. Six kids. Mm. You know what I mean? Life. Being on some real shit. Trying to get to it and take care of the family. Right. I Rap don't that. pay the bills. Niggas be frauding, buying streams and all that bullshit. Man. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I, was, I was really trying to take care of the kids and take care of the family. Man. I want, yeah. I want, no. I ain't had nobody sponsoring me and none of that shit, none of that bullshit. Everything was like, no, everything come from the muscle. Raw bucks, no. Shout out Raw Bucks. That's my fucking dog. Shout out Ryan there. No use connected with Raw Bucks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's more that's my fucking yeah, dog. Raw Bucks. No, I'm connected, connected with a lot of people. Raw Bucks no. Like you, 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 you had to bribe me to lead the block, bro. That nigga that nigga bro. He said, I'm the best at Philly hands down. Remember, I ain't have a plug. I'm the man now. Man, that's my you, you nigga to, you right there. Bribe there me to bro. Lead, you, had to, you had to bribe me to lead the block, bro. You couldn't, mm. you couldn't get me off the block. You couldn't. It was like you had to tell me some some shit to lead me to, to some money to go to some rap shit. No, nah, bro, mm-hmm. I'm right here. I was selling crack out the studio, the wall, uh, and the little, little little basement joint. Yeah, it's yeah. like, no, I'm, I'm I'm staying right here. Y'all go where y'all go. I'm staying right here. That's how I was for me. It was like, nope, I'm not going. It, back in the day, uh, uh, club flow, all that bullshit down Delaware Avenue. I was down there and all that type of shit. It was like, mm-hmm. it's like, nope, I'm here for a while, but I gotta go back to the block. I gotta go. Ain't no I money here. It. Y'all here spending money, but no, nope, my money's on the block. Nah, I feel that. Twenty Y. I got to get to it. Y'all had spending money, having fun. No, nope, I'm going to the block. So, so why now? Cause why not? Mm. It's still here, it's still in me. You know what I'm saying, people, you don't give up on what's, what's God gave you, right? Well, was it like something that happened though? Like um, that was like, you know what? I need to, I need to. I'm jump. sick of it. I'm, the music right. game, I'm sick yeah, of. I was it. Waiting, I've been you trying. can use this humble to sit for like fucking ten minutes on this motherfucker. Turn up, nigga. Tell I'm me why tired you sick of this of shit. I'm tired of the foolery. I'm tired of niggas lying. I'm tired of y'all fraud and acting like it. This it ain't that. You're lying. You know, no camera. This camera, right here, niggas. Y'all know me. You're lying. A lot of things y'all talk about out here now. You're lying. I've been around for a long time. If you don't like me or you blackballed me, you don't fuck with me or not. But I've been around. I've been reaching out to you and reaching out and reaching out and reaching out and reaching out. I got DMs out the fucking ass. <laughs> y'all asking about two hundred dollars for Instagram posts and shit like that. Why are you asking me for fucking money, bro? If I'm telling you, I'm a diamond in the dirt, and I'm telling you, I got this shit right here for you. Why are you asking me for two hundred dollars to put you in the Instagram story? It don't make sense, man. I'm coming to you with platinum fucking music, bro. You got a record label, and I was coming to you and reaching out to you and reaching out to you. It made no sense. I, it's a bunch of smoke and mirrors, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, facts. It is what it is at the end of the day. Listen. I don't know what it is. I ain't a bitter nigga or whatever. Y'all would come up with all kinds of crazy shit, whatever it is, but I don't like you. Fuck you. <laughs> when I see you, pardon my back. I, I, I reached out to you, right? I tried to fuck with you. You ain't want to fuck with me then. You don't want to fuck with me now, so... It is what it is. We can make money together. We can make money together. But you knew you was on nut shit then. And you still on nut shit. That's cool too. But cash me the fuck out. Because I got kids to provide for. And in the neighborhood, I'm trying to bring the fuck up. And a lot of young boys, I don't want them going through the knuckles head shit like I did coming up. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, no. Nah, that's a fact, bro. Hey, one thing before we get out of here, I do want to say. They can't stop what's destined, bro. You're not going to stop. It's destined for greatness. I've been saying it for a long time. I'm destined for greatness. Y'all know that, and I know that. You can't stop me. I'm being your fucking face. Every time you see me, you see me. I'm by myself, but I'm not by myself. You understand me? Mm, but- I'm always around. I'm always doing something. I'm never just letting up off some shit. Oh, he ball be on some other shit. No, I'm on point at all times, bro. I'm focused. I'm in my own zone. I ain't worried about you niggas. I don't look at y'all. I look through you. you know what I'm saying? 
to those that fuck with me, what's up? If you don't fuck with me, what's up? I love <laughs> you for the sake of the law. And that's just it. You know what I mean? Uh, that's a big fact, bro. Yo, before we I get love out. everybody and what the city doing right now. I love it. I love everything what's going on. Keep that shit popping. Let's unite. Let's really get together and make some shit happen. Shake shit up. Stop acting like you better than because you're not, man. Stop being online and fraud and pump faking and saying you this and saying that. And I ain't cash apping you shit. I'm not paying you nothing. No. Fuck no. You ain't never went platinum. You never went gold. I ain't giving you a dime, bro. What I like giving you something for? I'm not paying your phone bill, gas bill, buying you weed, buying back. We're not sponsoring shit for you, bro. I got talent. You got talent. Let's link up. Let's make some shit happen. Other than that, fuck you. Part my back and I see you at the top. If you get there, I don't know what to tell you. But I'm here with this guy. Take over bars. What's your grand, bro? Where they can find you at? Gotti Rock YSB. RFM. You can see me. On, I'm always online. You see me. Stop acting like you don't see me. I know you see me. Scroll past my shit. You know somebody that know somebody that owe somebody that know me. And they owe me too. So what the fuck is up? Nigga. Damn, that's the fucking takeover files. I'm the hustle no of the year, guy, shit. I'm just me. I'm just guy. And I'm here by myself. Always. My man Ray's. He's gone. And it is what it is, man. YSB for life, RFM, know that. Mm. I ain't going nowhere. Double MG, I'm on the way. Yeah. It's your boy Lito Takeover, the hustle of the year. My dog Gotti just came through, blessed to take over bars. And that was Takeover Files. We'll see y'all next time. Hello.